Welcome to the whole note. <laughs> Today, we will be talking about the last five years that is written uh, with books and lyrics and music by Jason Robert Brown. Today's guest is a very good friend of mine, and I am so happy for him to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Gary Bernard DiNardo. Hello, 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 hello. I'm so happy to be here. I'm really excited to be part of this. Um, thank you for having me, and thank you for letting me talk about this show. This is one of my favorite shows. Um, because it's usually such a divisive show mm -hmm. when it comes to people's opinions of it. A um, little bit about me. I am a nurse and I work in hospital administration and I have a theater degree as well because I like to get all the things. So <laughs> few degrees, few different directions. Uh, and I live in the DC area. I, I'm just outside of DC in Virginia and been doing theater since I was a kid. And now I am much older than that. <laughs> and I've formed <laughs> some opinions about some theater. So uh, any excuse to talk about it and why I think things are good and why I think some things aren't so good. Thanks Amen. for having me. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get right into this nitty gritty of the show with the last five years. Um, it is a very interestingly written show. It is from, a, it is from the, vote, the viewpoint of two people. One is telling the story from the end to the beginning of their relationship. And another is telling the story from the beginning to the end of their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, last five years, um, premiered in 2001 in Chicago at the Northlight Theater. Um, and it starred Norbert Leo Butts as Jamie Willerstein and Lauren Kennedy as Kathy Hyatt. It was then transferred to Off-Broadway at the Mini mm -hmm, Minette Theater in 2002. And um, Lauren Kennedy was replaced by Sherry, Sherry Renee Scott, <laughs> lovely Sherry Renee Scott, uh, <laughs> because Lauren Kennedy was going overseas to West End to do South Pacific. Now, I just want to—I just want to let you know, mm -hmm. uh, Lauren Kennedy actually left before they had uh, left Chicago, and oh, that's how wow. Sarah. Uh, 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 I can never say her name, Sarah Renee Scott. I always want to say Sherry. Sh Sherry, Sherry Renee Scott. I always screwed up. <laughs> Sherry Renee Scott ended up on the cast album because they recorded before they even went off Broadway. Um, but that Lauren Kennedy actually left before they even left Chicago. Mm, thank you for that one, then. See, look, look. <laughs> Nuggets. <laughs> Nuggets. Um, it had a revi an, an off-Broadway revival which starred Adam Cantor as Jamie Willerstein and Betsy Wolf, love that woman, as Kathy Hyatt in 2013 at Second Stage Theater. And then in 2016, there was a concert benefit that, that starred Cynthia Erivo and Joshua Henry as Kathy Hyatt and Jamie Willerstein, respectively. Oh, I, I just want that, I, I just want there to be a recording of it because Cynthia Erivo and Joshua Henry can sing me the phone book and I'll be very happy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's usually those one-off shows that you really find these beautiful nuggets of interpretations of shows. Mm -hmm. And it's sad, but that's I, also one of the, like bittersweet beautiful things about theater is that it's transient it's there and then it's gone and it was a moment that you had to be there in time it, it's it's very exclusive and that's mm -hmm. what i love about it <laughs> so gary what are your thoughts on this show oh so many so many thoughts um so i discovered this show uh i want to say my the summer before my junior year of college um, I'll let you figure out when that was, but <laughs> it was sometime after 2002. Um, and it was introduced to me by a friend of mine and he told me the premise and I was like, oh gosh, the, the, all this back and forth, that sounds crazy because it's telling Jamie's story from the beginning to the end. And it's telling Kathy's story from the end to the beginning. And I was like, eh, that's a lot of back and forth. And I listened to it. And I didn't stop playing that CD. Yes, CD. I didn't stop playing that CD 
for the entire summer. And I'm telling you, this is also the summer that Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince came out. I was playing that CD while I was reading that book. I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I'm uh, for in the, within the theater world, I am an actor by trade and I love digging into characters. And something I particularly love is when it's a very complex character because uh, particularly in musical theater, we often deal with these um, very flat characters, like they are caricatures. Mm -hmm. And in this show, uh, you see these two characters and frankly, it's hard to like either of them. And I think that is such an important thing because that is life that like Jason Robert Brown did an excellent job of capturing that relationships can get messy and there's not always a good guy and a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he nailed it. And often I'll be listening to this album and I'll just, I'll, I'll, realize there's this little nugget of a phrasing or just the the way that somebody has uh done who does a, does a throwback to something earlier in the show and it's just it's beautiful and it's poetic and it's literally like a, a in a relationship when you throw something back to the beginning of the relationship i remember when you did this mm -hmm. and so um i love this show and I would love to direct this show because I also love stringed instruments. <laughs> so it, it's beautiful music, complicated music. Um, but I think that it can really, you can really capture an audience in a bit of reality, which is something rare in musical theater. Now, what's so funny about this show is there was a 2014 movie adaptation now, the movie did exactly what the show was was supposed to do because everybody was fearing that the movie was going to chrono was going to put everything in chronological order, mm -hmm. but it did exactly what the stage show did. But the movie, like, sort of amplified a lot of the nuances that's in the show itself, which made it which just enhanced the viewing experience for me. And plus, it starred my absolute. <laughs> favorite person in the entire world, Jeremy Jordan. Oh, you and I have different favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Anna Kendrick, I know, I love her. <laughs> Jeremy Jordan's also fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jeremy Jordan was probably, I don't want to say he was the best Jamie, but a lot of his vocal nuances made me go, oh, okay, this is the Jamie. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Anna Kendrick, but like, Sherry Renee Scott just, she just tore my heart out with, with the first song, which, you know what? Let's go ahead and get into the song breakdown. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, the first and... song in the show is Still Hurting, sung by Kathy, mm -hmm. and it's, the ending for her story of the relationship. Uh, this song, it for it to be the opening number, it instantly breaks your heart because you're instantly like, ah, oh, Jamie is awful. Why did you leave Kathy? Why? There was no reason for you to have left Kathy. We're already making assumptions before we even met Jamie. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, I think that was a very big risk on Jason Robert Brown's part, because if we already have a villain, then why do we need a story? Mm -hmm. And we are, if we already know the outcome, why do we need the story? So I think it was a very big risk on Jason Robert Brown's part. But at the same time, it was absolutely intuitive to the intent of this show, which mm -hmm. is to say, hey, this is a pain that we all feel at some point in our lives. And we are gonna dive into why it happens. Now, another thing about this song is your, it, it instantly sets up the rest of the show because as an audience member, you automatically know both sides, well, not truly both sides, but you automatically know what's, what's about to happen with, with these two characters that we're about to be introduced to. Mm -hmm. and with how it's 
staged. Now, I've only seen it staged once. You see Jamie leaving the ring on the table after their opening sort of dance. And then, <laughs> yeah, dance, <laughs> which, you know, <laughs> the podcast viewers are like, what are you doing? I'm just he's just, he's just kind of like wriggling <laughs> like a guy who doesn't know how to dance out of his palm. <laughs> and then you just see him walk off stage and then you're just left there with, with Kathy. Mm -hmm. And then it, the, the thing I love about this, about this musical is like almost all the songs sort of flow into one another. And the next song after this, it's Shits a Goddess. And it's an upbeat, happy song. Well, because it's the beginning of their relationship and it is this guy saying, oh my God, you're wonderful. And I have some things that we'll talk about a little bit later <laughs> about this song and how I feel about it and some history of this mm -hmm. song and how it came to be. Um, but yeah, Shiks a Goddess. It, like you go from this melancholy ballad. Is it a ballad? For I'll I'm call still hurting. Okay. I'll call it a ballad. Um, and it immediately transitions, like you said, into this upbeat, almost like salsa y. Yeah. And it is so exciting and fun and active. And you're like, oh my gosh, this guy is totally into her. How did things go wrong? And that's really how they hook you. That's mm -hmm. how they get you, Jason Robert Brown. I see you. Uh, <laughs> because we, nobody, people don't enter a relationship uh, with a mediocre attitude about it. They're not like, oh yeah, I guess I'll do a relationship. If they do, what the heck? Um, <laughs> but yeah, you dive in face first and are prepared to get messy and things go wrong sometimes. And the crazy thing about the song is Jamie lists all the women he's been with. And at first, when at, at first listen, you're just like, oh, cool, cool. But like he goes through like a list of almost 10 people. And as an audience member, you don't you, you don't go, oh Jamie, you're a man horse. Mm. You're just listening to this guy saying, oh, I've been through this and this, I've been through this and this, I've dated this and this and this and this, until you get to you, the perfect person that is for me. And it makes you go, oh, Jamie might have a sex addiction or he might, he might be a, a bit of a player. See, you and I have different interpretations of that song. I don't Ooh. know that he had sex with all of them. <laughs> I think he's just been on dates with them. Um, but now I'm going to have to listen to it again. And see <laughs> well, see, um, I say that because a song later on, he's having difficulty and and it just and i just fall back to this song and i'm like oh maybe we'll get to that in a bit the so, next song oh go ahead go ahead well and i was gonna say so like the show progresses and we are once again brought back to kathy's story which is in the future past whatever uh it's just before he leaves her and you realize that this is one of their last interactions where she's explain like she's excited to see him while she's on tour as an actress. Spoiler. <laughs> uh, while she's on tour as an actress, he's come to visit her on her birthday and then tells her, I have to leave, by the way. I can't stay here because I have to go to a party. Mm. And yeah, that's Oof, rough. And, and, and to sort of give like a little nugget into their actual personal lives and, and their status within the world. So Kathy is in Ohio. <laughs> Again, we'll get into that later on. Well, she keeps auditioning for shows and failing and ending up in these tours and laments being in Ohio. And... Wow. So Jamie flew to Ohio just to see her for her birthday so he can fly back to New York to go to a party. And so that, that also just sets up what their sort of 
class is. And it, it, it instantly just tells you in this one song where Jamie is in terms of like the scale and where Kathy is. So like Jamie is, the, is obviously the breadwinner at this point. And Kathy is like, I, I, I want to be on this level, but I'm not. And it's okay because I have you to support me and we support each other. <laughs> but it's my birthday. Can you just be here for my... And this is the only F-bomb that the show, the movie got away with because they wanted to give it a PG-13 rating. So it's the only F-bomb they kept was in that song. Um, and I think it was the right choice. But um, yeah, she... And this is also in their in their chronological storyline, the first time I think she calls him out for being interested in other women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. But things progress. Thing, thing, the show keeps moving. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. And, and I think this next song is very poignant into what we're talking about. The next song is Moving Too Fast, sung by Jamie. And everything in, in his, in, everything that is happening in Jamie's life is literally like rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire. And he's like, whoa, I didn't expect all of this before 24. And now I'm on top of the world. Like you, you start to feel his, um, his ego becoming much bigger than he is. And you, you're already sensing, oh, this might become an issue later on between him and Kathy. What do you think? And he, but within the song, he's acknowledging like all these wonderful, amazing things are happening to me, which I think is a very uh, big change from who he is at the end of the show Mm -hmm. and like how he approaches things. Kathy is happening to and for him. It's not that he earned her which is kind of more his mentality is like you have to work for what you earn and like he found an agent who loves him it's it's that he's lucky to have all these things coming to him whereas later in the show he's like uh, I, one of my favorite lyrics in the show is in uh uh oh gosh what's the song i can't remember the name of the song ah but it's a, uh, he says i will not fail just Uh, So you can be comfortable, Kathy. If I didn't believe in you. If I didn't believe in you, thank you. Uh, Which is also another important line that I want to talk about. (laughs) Um, But I will not lose because you can't win. Very different from I found a woman I love and who loves me and I found an agent who loves me. Like, I found all this happiness. Very different. So, sorry. Oh, no, don't apologize. That's that's (laughs) what this is about. We are... (laughs) <laughs> It'll be breaking the show down song by song just to let the audience know what's happening. And, and I love this. Um, then we get to the next song, which you start to see Kathy sort of not really dissension, but more of her, I don't, I don't even want to call it jealousy. It's, it's almost like apprehension. Like, I don't, this isn't what, this isn't where I want to be. And, and the next song is, I'm a part of that. And it's just. It sounds like she's I, trying to convince herself. Right, right. She's like, you know, you, everything is happening for you. And you know what? I'm a part of that. And I should be happy. And then like the, like the, the very last part is, I'm a part of that, aren't I? Mm-hmm. And this is, this is important because uh-huh. this is the first time we see something where we are, I, I'm going to say this is important every time we do a song, sorry. <laughs> this, well, which is the sign of a good show with songs that all matter. Uh-huh. Um, but this is important because this is when we start to see that Kathy's not blameless in this. Uh-huh. She is jealous. And yeah, that's something that everybody has to deal with every now and then. But that jealousy did start to create a divide. And it's, while he has supported her completely, her being jealous of him has tainted that support and made it so that 
they start, this is where the fracture begins to really grow in their relationship when it goes in real order. <laughs> there's, a, um, there's a moment in the song where she is describing Jamie's um, thought process for writing a book. And she's like sitting on the couch and just watching him pace and pace and pace. And then she's like, but then he smiles and suddenly his eyes light up the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. So she's like, she's watching and she's being, she's being a, 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 a muse, I'll say a muse mm -hmm. for him. And that's why she feels like she's a part of this. She's like, oh, he's becoming creative because of me. Everything that's happening is because I am there to support him. Which the book, so he's a writer. And in Shiksa Goddess, he actually says, you are my inspiration. You're the story I should write. And the, and the book he writes is inspired by her. So she is, I thought, at first I thought you said she is a muse versus she is amused, but she <laughs> both to him. Like she, she inspired him to write uh -huh. this book. And that's why he was, and, and this book is what um, jettisoned him into fame uh -huh. that eventually gets to him. Um, but yes, it, it, she was a part of that and probably could have continued. Everybody's got their flaws. Who knows how they would have manifested had things gone differently, but her jealousy, I think, it uh, was instrumental in in dividing them. Now, now the next song is probably we're probably going to spend a, a good little bit on this song. <laughs> okay, the Shmuel song. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which is just a goofy song. It is, but there's a lot to unpack in it. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. At, at, at first you're like, okay, why is he telling this story about an older, about an older gentleman who is at the, I'm gonna say the tail end of his life, who has just been miserable mm -hmm. until, what was it? Like the, is it the clock that goes back or like something happens? So the clock starts talking to him and mm -hmm. says, uh, make a stitch right now. And, I'll, and something like, I'll make all your dreams come true, uh, which isn't super oversimplification, totally wrong lyrics, but <laughs> make one stitch and uh, you can regain everything that you lost. And at first Shmuel's like, nah. And then he's like, just do it, just, just do it, man. <laughs> and so he does. And time starts going backwards as he starts sewing this beautiful dress that he wanted to make as a young man for a woman in uh, Odessa, which I don't know if there is a relationship between Klimovich and Odessa. <laughs> well, Klimovich is the place where they're in because they're, because he's in a tailor shop in Klimovich. Right, right. I just don't, I don't know if like Odessa's right next door or what, <laughs> but it's this woman that he loved. And he was able to recapture time, but that's a story. And that's, a, that's not reality. And that's not how things get to play out in reality, which is what Jamie's getting at. And Jamie then compares Shmuel to Kathy saying, hey, you are ambitious. You are <laughs> this ridiculous freak that I love. Here's everything that you need so that way you can go and pursue your dreams. And then at the very end, he gives her a watch and says, take your time. Every, like everyone has their own path. Jamie's path is already like rocket launched while Kathy is sort of just trying to just catch up with him. And Jamie's like, no, 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 no. This isn't a competition. We are in this together. So I'm gonna help you now, give it time. Which I think that probably nine out of 10 people in the theater world would say, yeah, if I had somebody who could support my career, I could probably make it because then I could pay for my headshots. I could pay for uh, travel for auditions. I could pay for outfits. I could pay to go to the gym all the time. 
So like having that kind of support can be huge to someone in entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he gives it so beautifully and willingly in this moment. And you and I were speaking about this a little bit earlier and I was like, oh, I'm going to save some of it for the podcast. Um, But (laughs) this is the most healthy their relationship is. Very much so. Genuinely in love with him and like frustrated with her a lot, but supportive of him. And he is reciprocating support. Um, in a very great and, and admittedly it's it's a monetary way but like that's okay that's how relationships work it's you give in different ways and you give what you can it's the most healthy their relationship is um that being said i think his setting that he sets himself up for one of the most cutting remarks later in the show Yes. Which we'll get to later in the show. I think I didn't, I didn't even realize that until just now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so the <laughs> next song that we get into is A Summer in Ohio, which is sort of Kathy's upbeat song. This is like the first upbeat song that she has in the show. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, it's this like song saying, I'm, I'm going to grin and bear it because I love you. And I'm trying to make it as an actress. <laughs> and she is absolutely hating it because her summer in Ohio, she is at this at the theater that it's it's not regional, it's summer stock. <laughs> and she's like, ah, oh, I'm here, it's work. I just want to go ahead and just do it. And she is griping about it because like there's a she's rooming with a former stripper and her snake. Point, uh, sidebar in the movie, the former stripper is played by, you know who? Betsy Wolf. Betsy Wolf. That is right. I see. Thank you. I did. I, I did not realize that. And of course, in the movie, Jason Robert Brown makes an appearance as the pianist later on. <laughs> Why does this pianist hate me? <laughs> <laughs> Because he wrote the music, that's why. <laughs> Abuse. <laughs> but yeah, like she is, it, it's, a, it's a very tongue-in-cheek song about how much she hates working at this particular theater, but she does it with a smile. <laughs> well, and, and I think all of us in the theater world can attest to some, for many of us, we'd love to be famous, we'd love to be making it, but honestly, we just want to be doing it. So to be doing it in some fashion is just, we got to be thankful because we could not be doing it. She could still be wiping down bars for which I think she thanks Jamie, but yeah. Now there is a part in this song where um, she talks about a guy named Richard Mm -hmm. who has a huge crush on her and she knows it, but she likes to play with them. Not not in like a in a sexual way, but more like, oh, thank you for noticing me kind of way. But you know what? You're never gonna get me. Um, she 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 mentions that she went into a a borders in Kentucky. Rest in peace, borders. <laughs> <laughs> and she saw that, and she saw Jamie's book under new and recommended, and 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 then she was then she like mentioned that Richard was like. I'm just going to say the lyric. And she was like, Richard, who was with me, was, un- was uncharacteristically quiet. He said, well, all things considered, I guess you don't have to buy it because it's her guy. <laughs> and then the next, the next stanza is like my favorite in the song. So I smile, I, I smile like, like Mona Lisa and I laid my visa down. And I'm like, that's hilarious. She's yeah. like, I know, but I'm going to buy it anyway. <laughs> I'm supporting you. <laughs> no, and I and I think they try to portray Richard as this like sleaze ball. Right. Very much so. so very much so. Yeah. Which is but like at the end oh, of the song, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the song, we we come to, to the realization that she's married to Jamie. And I was like, oh, so this is a song where they actually got married. Well, where they're after it's after the wedding. It's after the wedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the wedding, we didn't mention this earlier, the two characters aren't on stage together. Oh, no. They're not on stage together until the wedding in the mm-hmm. middle of the show. 
which goes into the next song, the next 10 minutes, mm -hmm. which this is probably one of the most beautifully written songs because the beginning of the song, you hear Jamie just randomly saying things and you're like, what in the world? And so Jamie is singing the first half of the song. And then all of a sudden, Kathy is singing the next half of the song. And then she ends with asking the questions that Jamie was responding to in the very beginning. And I'm like, oh, so, mm -hmm. so like you, you, it's almost like a, an audible switch that now they're going in opposite directions. Like the next 10 minutes, they're meeting up and now Jamie is going through the future while Kathy is going through the past. They just shared a moment and that beautiful moment of marriage, uh, which everybody's like, oh, this is the happiest day of your life. And I always like to be like, I hope it gets better after this. <laughs> but um, yeah, it almost sounds like you're listening to just one half of an audio clip. Mm -hmm. and and the rest of the show isn't like that it's uh almost these monologues via song um or, or soliloquies i should say but this is the first time where you're definitely saying uh, why why are they saying that that doesn't make any sense until you hear the second the 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 call and response mm -hmm. on the, in the second half of the song the outro if you will of the song and then we get to the next song, which to me is like a turning point for, for the Jamie character. Cause it's right after he just got married and it's called A Miracle Will Happen. Um, so Jamie's, Jamie has A Miracle Will Happen. And then Kathy has later on in, in the same track, um, When You Come Home To Me, which is both of these songs are very juxtapositions to each other because A Miracle Will Happen is about Jamie looking at all of these other women who all of a sudden are noticing him. Right. And he's just like, I wish all of them would just, a miracle would happen if they would just either disappear or they're all like Mr. Ed because I don't need to see this pair of breasts that's in front of me. And I'm, I'm talking to her with my left hand. I'm just, you know, gesturing with my left hand saying, hey, I'm married, uh, uh, but you can't. And in, in the cast recording, is when Jamie mentions the F bomb again mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can't screw her anyway. Oh, and actually, and, in the soundtrack for the movie, they did let them have it. So it is two Fs. But it's only in the soundtrack, not the movie. Not the movie. Truth, truth. truth. Fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I can't blank her anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah. It, it, this is Jamie's lament of, like I was saying before, earlier he was saying how, ex how happy he was, how lucky he was to have this woman interested in him. And now he's saying, oh, I can't, I can't get him off of me. <laughs> just surrounded by women and that all of a sudden that just wants to be around him, wants to be with him. Poor and man. then you get into Kathy's part, which is her auditioning for all these musicals using the same song when you come home and then you, you just see her progression from when you come home to me I was to like it's it's unpolished well it, it, it goes from she her successful audition essentially that got her into the summer stock backwards True. She gets worse. True. She, 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 she gets, gets worse, worse as it progresses <laughs> until at the very end of the song she's just basically screaming when you come home to me <laughs> and then you and then you hear Jamie sort of like oh wait no 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 that's that's next is, is the audition sequence that's next mm. um so Kathy is having failed audition after failed audition after failed audition and then we get into the next song which is climbing up hill climbing oh. up hill <laughs> one of the most hilarious songs meta one of the most meta hilarious songs because this is a song that captures how literally everybody who's ever auditioned for a theater production feels <laughs> there's a part in the song where she is she she starts singing the song and then she's like ah, 
these are the guys that cast Linda Blair in the musical. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, I suck, I suck, I suck, I suck. And then you'll see, and, and it's, I'm just like, wow, yeah. It's literally what goes through everyone's brain that is auditioning. And, 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 then, and then at one point, she's like, you know, she, she always goes into a room full of guys, usually gay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm, truth. <laughs> And then she's talking about how she's always auditioning with these women who are thinner and fitter than her, who've already been to the gym, who all look just like her. So it's like, why, why am I even trying? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> she like, even as, as she's like listening or as she's singing her uh, audition, she's even thinking to herself, Oh, if I don't get the call back for this, I can go to Crate and Barrel with mom and buy a couch, which like when something's not going your way, but you're just like going through the motions at that point. Absolutely nailed it. And then she's, she goes on to say, well, Jamie needs a space to write. So I, it's not that I want to go to get a couch with mom. What's it going to be like when we have kids? When finally you come home and it's, it kind of like snaps her back to reality. What's it going to be like when we have kids? Oh, this isn't going so hot. <laughs> you start to see her unravel. And they haven't even gotten married at that point in her mm -hmm. life. This is just after he, um, I think this would fall just after he did the Shmuel song. So yeah. he's, he's yeah. laid things out for her that so that she can audition. And this is how she's feeling about it. And then at the very end, Kathy is, is singing to the top of her lungs the song and Jamie is like Kathy 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 listen to me and then which is very very weird because like Jamie like the next song is is the future for Jamie but it seems like it's in direct correlation with the past from Kathy and the next song is if I didn't believe in you which is a very beautiful song. And you see that she, he's singing this because Kathy feels like she's just a prop. She's just, she's just the arm candy for all of his parties. And she doesn't wanna to go to this party. Go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead Gary. Go ahead. I feel like this song, I'm gonna ruin it for so many people listening to this podcast right now. Because it is a beautiful song. It sounds gorgeous. And it sounds like some, what's so Im, uh, uh, impactful about this song is it's something people would actually say, after, like having an argument, trying to say something that will comfort somebody. But what he is saying is, if I didn't believe in you, I wouldn't be here. So if I don't think you're going to try or succeed, I will leave. Mm. Mm. I wouldn't have done all this if I thought you were going to fail. It's horrible. <laughs> like what he is saying to her in that moment is, if you don't pull yourself up by your bootstraps, I'm out. I'm sorry. Let me comfort you with those words. It's horrible. And well, it, it's beautifully done. This is one of the what really made me fall in love with the show was that um, because it's so easy to think, oh, he's trying to comfort her. But if you listen to him, you realize he's trying to comfort himself. I think at this point in their relationship and from Jamie's eyes, I think he's already moved on. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's already cheating. Yeah. And spoiler. <laughs> spoiler <laughs> and the ending of the song is jamie asking kathy to just go ahead and get dressed so they can go to this party so that way you know they can be seen together like the happy couple and and, and kathy's like no and well and that's that's when he is saying i will not lose if you uh so sorry I will not fail so that you can be comfortable, Kathy. I will not lose because you can't win. 
which is like the uh, stab heart, stab <laughs> right to the heart stab right to the heart now we had mentioned earlier that there was a that there that a song was a callback to a particular moment yes so this this song and it was uh, that he, when he was doing the Shmuel song, he's saying, let me provide you all the tools to succeed. And he was setting himself up to be able to say, you haven't succeeded. And did you think it was gonna be easy? Oh, well, and I gave you all the tools to succeed. Okay, I, 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 if I didn't believe in you, I wouldn't be here. So if you're not believing in you, I'm out. It's, it's Jason Robert Brown, uh, uh, applause. Well done, <laughs> sir. Well done on like tying the story forth and back. <laughs> and this goes into the next song, which again, it's an upbeat song for Kathy. Um, and it's called, I Can Do Better Than That. And it is, I'm gonna say it's like, it's the honeymoon phase of their relationship. And she's just talking about like all of her other friends. <laughs> One of her friends got into a little situation at the end of her senior year. And that little situation is she got pregnant. And then my favorite lyric, like a shot, she and Richard got married that summer. <laughs> Mitchell, Mitchell. <laughs> what was it? Mitchell. Mitchell, thank you. She yes. and Mitchell got married that summer. And I was like, ha, shotgun wedding because she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 and she's like, you know what? I knitted her a, a cute baby sweater thinking <laughs> I could do better than that. Yeah. Which. It, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. This is, this is Kathy uh, being a little big for our bridges. Uh -huh. And this is, this is what led Kathy into going down that whole spiral of I am not successful. I'm not good enough. And uh, that, that, little green monster of jealousy because she had built herself up and she was pompous, frankly. And then she just, she's comparing herself to all of these people. And she's like, nope, I can do better than that. I can do better than that. I can do better than that. And <laughs> she, she talks about like the guys that, that she had um, been with. Um, one of the actor guys, that, that she that she had been with like left her for for her career and she was like he blew me off with a heartfelt letter thinking I could do better than that so that better than that is Jamie in, in, in her mind it's Jamie Jamie is the pinnacle right there yeah Jamie is everything that she's ever wanted and she just wants to show him like with that song she's saying let me show you where i came from i'm never going back to that which uh like I, i've got uh, i've got mixed emotions about that mentality like coming from a small town uh and, and leaving that small town to get to what you want to as a gay man that's something i have certain connection with but at the same time you do it with a grain of salt and a hint of humility do you know what this scene reminds me of? And this is totally off subject, but kind of on subject. The scene in Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, yes. where Vita takes them to see the big the, the big house and a big mansion. And um, um, Chi Chi says, oh, honey, you were rich. And Vita's like, no, 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 my parents are rich. <laughs> and, and, you, and you just see the mother come out the door and Vita waves and the mother's like, oh no. And, she and go back inside. It's, it's almost like that moment, like, yeah, see, this is where I came from, and this is why I'm never going to come back to this. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I, for her, it's she is judgmental of the like middle and low class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though like, she's judgmental of where she came from. And I think, like I said, it's okay to want to get out of that, but do it with a hint of humility. Amen. And sh she does not have any. <laughs> and, and that leads her down that path of jealousy. Mm -hmm. so. And this goes into the next song, which... <sighs> yep. This is... Uh... 
a gut wrencher. <laughs> We're gonna unpack this one a lot too. <laughs> um, the next song is Nobody Needs to Know, and it's sung by Jamie. And it starts off with, hey, good morning. You look like an angel. And instantly you're like, oh, right. Singing about Kathy. Yeah, maybe they're going to make it. Literally, the show starts with their breaking up and you're like, maybe they're going to make it. <laughs> and then the next line. Kathy, Kathy is, is waiting. waiting. I'm like, what? <laughs> Out that oh, he's yeah. having an affair and this entire song it, 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 it's 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 gut-wrenching because a part of you wants to feel for jamie but at the same token you're just like but you're committing adultery you are violating the rules of your the, the sanctity of your marriage by sleeping with somebody else but at the same token you're like but do we blame them well and i'll say this that this is a very heteronormative show yes <laughs> very much so so like it's I, I i prefer to say not breaking the sanctity of your marriage breaking the sanctity of your vows there we um, go. Mm -hmm. because uh, different people have different forms of marriage and this show did come out in the early 2000s where and i feel like we've come a long way oh um, yeah that like different relationships have different rules um but yeah, if your rules are don't cheat, then don't cheat. <laughs> um, and the movie interpreted this differently than I interpreted it in the show. Mm -hmm. In the movie, he goes through several women. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, interpreted from the show, it was one woman. It was Elise, who is uh, somebody involved in, in the publishing world. Mm -hmm. Um that he mentions in the final song. Um, it, yeah, I just imagined that's what he was doing. And while that sucks, once again, it's an excellent capture of the real emotions that go on during those moments in a person's mind where they feel suffocated, suppressed uh, by their partner. He explains like, I just want a little bit of my life that I can just be happy about without you coming in and ruining it. And that's sad to put it mildly. Like that, that is, that can be, I, I imagine that most relationships that fall apart, that is an emotion that is there somewhere. One of the lyrics is um, he has a little corner to himself and then she sends in battalions to blow it all away. And I'm like, wow like everything from, from the show you get that jamie is filling up the house but it's actually kathy that is filling up the house to to, to the point to where he doesn't have a space of his own mm -hmm. he doesn't have that quiet little piece of 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 happiness for himself because kathy and kathy's problems are so big and so massive that she is filling up the house with negativity and she insinuates herself into like she insinuates herself into his uh success be through feeling like i need to be a part of that mm -hmm. i'm a part of that that's about the same time that this song is happening in chronological order and he just doesn't like he's okay with her not being a part of it um, and that jealousy, and like, like I said, the jealousy is what split them apart, but part of that is because she wanted to be part of that so much. She was like grappling to be part of it, and he just wanted a little to himself. So this is about where uh, most people have made their final decision that it is absolutely Jamie's fault, and Jamie is bad uh -huh. because uh -huh. he did this thing. Which it, it, it brings up an interesting point because Kathy was trying to find meaning in her life, whereas Jamie has found that meaning. And so Kathy's like, well, your meaning is now my meaning. And, and Jamie's like, wait, I, I want something to myself. Hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so that goes into... It's probably the most saddest 
section of of the show it's the finale um it's goodbye until tomorrow and i could never rescue you um goodbye and both of them are singing almost like both of these songs at the, not at the same time but more like at some parts right yeah um so it starts off with kathy and it's right after their first date and she's singing goodbye until tomorrow goodbye until the rest of my life because I have been waiting I have been waiting for you so you see you see Kathy young and then you see um Jamie slightly older and you see Kathy full of hope full of happiness and then you see Jamie just done despondent sad like but, he's just- but resolute but resolute, yes, yes. Um, when the first time I saw this show was, um, I'm gonna say it was like 2006, 2007 at Everyman Theater in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And the very last moment of the show is you see Kathy waving goodbye to Jamie as he's going down the street in his car. But you see Jamie walking out the house with his suitcase. And um, Kathy says the last line, um, close the gate and lock the door. And I'm like, oh, God, no, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And then Jamie sings this beautiful, I don't, I- It it can be a bit jarring. I I think beautiful is nice. um, I could never rescue you. It's like, you know what? I was never, I, I could never rescue you. I, I gave you everything, but the only person that could make it work is you. I mean, the movie does a beautiful job with this as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the movie shows Jamie leaving and Kathy entering. <laughs> and it's this, and it's that same music from the very, very beginning of the show going into Still Hurting. I mean, it, frankly, when Gary decides to direct it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the very, very ending of it of the show will have s- reset the stage so that you could start the show over. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, truthfully, this show is like a time loop. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's it's it keeps going in full circle. It keeps going and, and keeps happening and it keeps going, which is almost a metaphor for the marriage. Like they keep going in a circle with, with Jamie and with Kathy and it just, it never went anywhere. Yeah. Ugh. And we Ugh. go through these cycles in our lives uh, and we can go through these cycles of bad relationships in our lives. Um, but anyway. So that's where the song, that's where the show ends, beautifully, I, painfully but beautifully, um, and people leave the show with a few different things they might be feeling. Some people might be feeling they know who's to blame. Uh, when we were getting ready for this show, my friend, you told me <laughs> <laughs> I needed to choose a side. <laughs> I got to choose a side. So wait, before I do, I want to hear yours because I've had sides picked for this show for years it is a toss-up for me oh no they're they're both of them both of them are at fault but from like the 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 mental anguish standpoint i will have to say the person who is at fault is kathy and at fault for what because she she bought into the idea of Jamie, but once Jamie starts surpassing, starts surpassing her idea of himself and she wasn't progressing as well, she was like, oh, then you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a step back and I'm just gonna be as, as despondent and as detached as possible. Because if you're succeeding and I'm not, then that then that's that's not what a marriage is about. We're, we're both supposed to be equals, but we're not equals anymore. Mm-hmm. 
Whereas with Jamie, Jamie had been trying to push her, to comfort her, to be everything that she that he, that she needed him to be, but Jamie can only go but so far before he says, "What am I here for then? I'm not going to fail so that you can be happy." So, is it that Kathy is to blame for the end of the relationship? Is that what you're saying? Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a stance and I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm, I'm glad you took a stance. Um, and I appreciate that. And uh, I don't, I'm, I am going to take a bit of a cheat, but I think you'll appreciate the cheat on my opinion, which is who's to blame? Is it Jamie? Is it Kathy? It's the shrink. Oh, they uh, did go to marriage counseling. They went to marriage counseling and a marriage counselor could easily see these very obvious signs and the problems that would come from this. And I suspect that they went to some shoddy shrinks if they were going to say like, hey, you're jealous of your husband. And that that can be impactful in very negative ways. Um, and they like I, I really do think that all, a lot of these issues could have been worked through if they had vocalized them in more uh empathetic ways and more uh constructive ways i don't think that this relationship would have ended you know and with you saying this right now it puts the entire show into a different perspective <laughs> because a lot of the songs are them by themselves they're not saying it to the other person they're not expressing their feelings. So in essence, communication. The theme is is communication. <laughs> <laughs> oh my heavens. I've been thinking about this show for too many years. <laughs> um, so yes, that, that is that is my cop out, but simultaneously, I'm no, I'm I'm pretty confident about that. Because you can't at the end of a relationship and and I could take the easy route and say, yeah, Jamie cheated. He broke the rules. He's out. He's the reason. But mm, I think Kathy would have worked through that. Mm -hmm. I also think that Kathy has a lot of, um, uh, oh gosh, what is it called when you're reliant on another person? Codependency. Codependency. Oh, yeah. 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 It, like, it's, it's crippling codependency. But um, yeah. Oh, and that is the last five years. Yeah, in, there, a, in, in, a, in a nutshell. <laughs> do we have a few? Do we have a few minutes for just some 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 oh, goss to dish? The, we have all the time. But okay. first, for first, before we do that, mm -hmm. let us go into top three songs per person. So oh, give absolutely. me your top three songs. In what in order? order? Um, best. Better, good. <laughs> Wait, that's not helpful. That was horrible. <laughs> first, I mean, it's third. like my third favorite, my second favorite first. Yes. Okay. Um. So I would say that my third favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one. Because all these songs I, are really, really good. I, I know. And um, I really like, and, and this is purely because I'm talking about the human emotions that are entangled in them. I really do like um, Nobody Needs to Know. Mm -hmm. Which, I haven't confirmed this, but I'm pretty sure Lin-Manuel Miranda in- I was going to mention that. In yes. Hamilton, references- There's a line in Hamilton um, yeah. right after- He has an affair. Um, Hmm? Right after he has the affair, um, he says, "Nobody needs to know." And even the music right there is the same. So mm -hmm. I was like, "I'm pretty sure he's uh, doing an homage." I'm not saying mimic or copying; <laughs> he's doing an homage because that's what Manuel Miranda does. Mm -hmm. The world does not deserve him. Uh, <laughs> Continue. Sorry. Anyway, sorry. So uh, that's my third favorite. 
my second favorite is uh so they're all jamie's so. <laughs> <laughs> no they're no they're, they're not jamie's in all the songs but they're not all jamie's uh it's if i didn't believe in you because of that sick sick twist mm-hmm. mm, nope scratch that that's that's my favorite sorry <laughs> <laughs> That is the absolute favorite song. That's the absolute favorite song. My second favorite, though, is Goodbye Until Tomorrow. But it was close between that and If I Didn't Believe in You. Um, my three, um, okay, my third favorite song is definitely A Summer in Ohio because <laughs> as an actor, yeah, yeah you've been- end, end of sentence. <laughs> end of sentence. End of sentence. Um, my second favorite is definitely the next 10 minutes, just because of the, of the juxtaposition between the two mm-hmm. and then how they just wonderfully switch. But my absolute favorite, and it, it's kind of funny because you had a lot of, of Jamie songs and I have a lot of Kathy songs. <laughs> my absolute favorite song is Still Hurting because there, mm-hmm. it, you can relate to that song so much after a breakup. You're just sitting there as the walls are crumbling in and you're like, Covered in scars, I've done nothing to earn. Yes. Maybe there's somewhere a lesson to learn, but that wouldn't ease the fact. That wouldn't change the time. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Well, and, and, and when you're going through a breakup, people are always trying to say, "Oh, like it, this happened for the best," or everything. Uh-huh. I so like a hot take. I fuck uh, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> I don't know what kind of podcast this is. Am I allowed go to ahead, say go words? ahead. No, go I'm not going to say that word. I want to keep it PG because I want people to be like, oh, he's a family man. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I really hate the phrase, everything happens for a reason. And mm-hmm. like, I, I hate it because no, <laughs> it doesn't. We ascribe reason to these things that happen to us. But I particularly hate it because everything that's happened in my life has had a reason. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, like everything has worked out very well for me. I'm a very fortunate person and I'm very thankful for that. And uh, it's been an interesting journey of fate. uh, But yes, I hate that phrase. Mm -hmm. And people try to make you try to use that to comfort people when they're going through a breakup. Oh, you'll don't worry. There's something to learn from this. Oh, this is part of your journey. It's all part of the big guy's plan the most hated phrase that i have is oh honey there are plenty of fish in the sea honey the sea is full of salt water and i'm not a salty bitch (laughs) and fish poop (laughs) oh (laughs) i don't want to bathe in that thank you that's not where i want to look for love all right let's go ahead into the final thoughts or i'm sorry the random thoughts okay show um gary what are your random thoughts because you had a lot of tea that you wanted to spill earlier. Let's go and spill that tea now. <laughs> I left my teacup in the cub- cupboard. Uh, so th- this is probably some old information for a lot of people. But for those who don't know, Jason Robert Brown and his, at the time and still, ex-wife got into some business with this show because his ex-wife was furious that it reflected their relationship too much. And it was too close to the to the truth of what actually happened between them and a that's just some that's some dirty dirty laundry out there but sometimes life imitates art and art imitates life yeah but when life has non-disclosure agreement (laughs) and non-defamation agreements as part of your divorce agreement mm, nope that's gonna have an effect on your art honey So yeah, the, she actually, I don't know if it was a lawsuit, but she like took legal action against him when he was creating this show. And Shix the Goddess was changed as a result of that. It was originally a song um, called uh, uh, I Could Love Somebody Like You, which it is still referenced in the show by a song later. Maybe I could love someone like you at the end of Nobody Needs to Know. Um, but when it's the first song, it would have been Jamie's first song. 
uh, where he's singing, I could love somebody like you. It's a song about her being a Catholic uh, Irish descended woman, like with red hair and like all these things. And you, if you want to listen to that song, it is still out there. Jason Robert Brown actually recorded it as part of a solo album. Um, oh, I'm trying to, it's someone else, Wearing Someone Else's Clothes is the name of the yes, album. Yes, there it is. And I, I, saw, I saw the CD cover. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got a, a, a big guy is, is, who's like in a robe and a young kid. Anyway, uh, Jason Robert Brown's solo album. And I, I can see also why, like both Shiksa Goddess and uh, I Could Love Someone Like You are problematic songs, particularly these days. Uh, that they uh, they really reference a lot of racial and uh, heritage stereotypes uh, within like the Jewish community in Chicks Goddess and the Irish community within uh, in I Could Love Someone Like You. And uh, they're not always great stereotypes, which stereotypes aren't great in general. Uh-huh. But it's supposed to be a like, haha, you got to laugh song because you do need some humor in this show otherwise you're just going to leave feeling depressed all the time all the time so yes there there was some tea <laughs> there was some tea that got spilled and so the show got changed and we ended up with shiksa goddess which was a fun song as problematic as it is um so yeah that's one of my like random thoughts about the show um my random thought for the show is I've had this discussion with people before and whenever I mention it, they're like, oh, that can never work. Don't even think about that. But I've always thought, how would this show work within the LGBTQIA plus community? Like, could two guys do this as Jamie and Kathy? Could two women do this as Jamie and Kathy? Mm. Like, honestly, I kind of want to see it with two women with Jamie and Kathy, because like the names were, are, were already work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just, just to see would that change the the feel of the show uh once again kind of getting into sexuality and uh people how people form their relationships it would still kind of it would have to be a monogamous relationship easy enough um offhand I would need to dig into it a little deeper, but I think it could absolutely work. Uh, a few lyrics might need to be changed here or there when Kathy's singing about her pa- her exes. But maybe not. Maybe, maybe she not. Other- Guys. And yeah, a, a bisexual relationship too. Mm-hmm. Because bisexual erasure is real and we need to fight it. Preach. <laughs> but, All right. Oh, I love that. Good, mm-hmm. good. Ooh, good question. I love it. On a rating scale from a A plus to F, where would you put this? So this is in a vacuum. This is without any reference to any other show um, because that's how we should grade our children, not in reference to each other, but in reference to themselves and their growth. <laughs> uh, I give this, I don't give it a perfect A plus, but I do give it an A no, I give it a B plus. I give it a B plus. B plus because there's there's problematic things in it. Uh, I, I think that Shiksa Goddess could be adjusted and needs to be adjusted. Um, obviously, like the way the world works, this is, that shows they're not gonna change the show now, but um, I really think this is an excellent show for character study. You need mm-hmm. two really great, really, really strong actors, and they have to be strong singers as well. Um, because also, Jason Robert Brown's music is all over the map. Very much so. Quick tip for those who may be new to the theater world do not use a Jason Robert Brown song for an audition piece unless you absolutely know that the uh, pianist can play it because they will glare at you. They might not know it. And one of the worst auditions of my life was to a Jason Robert Brown song because the, the pianist was like, I have never looked at this music before and I need to sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a big old diatribe. Um, yes, so I give it a B 
plus, but I also give it some extra credit. <laughs> it's it's definitely a it's definitely a musical where you don't have to be a musical aficionado 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 okay. yes to to fully understand it, but you've got to really pay attention to it. Because if you've never heard it before and you've never seen it before and you just go on a whim and just watch it, you're going to be like, wait, what is going on? Why is something's not lining up? Um, once again, when I, when I saw it at Everyman, they had little glow boxes up from one to five. So it tells you what year of the mm. relationship that they're in. So immediately at the very beginning, it was still hurting and it was a five and you're like oh because then when it went to shit to goddess it went to one and you instantly go okay backwards forward got it so mm -hmm. you kind of you, you kind of kind of have to have some sort of indication of what's happening within the timeline so that people can actually follow correctly <laughs> i feel like that's a little bit of cheating like putting really? like flat out putting the years I think I would want something a little more abstract, like two two uh, gobos of silhouettes or their silhouettes or something that are slowly making their way across the stage the whole show, the whole show until the wedding where they meet and you see some like beautiful image that shows up when you combine the two images and then they continue their separate paths. I don't know. Yeah. When, when I direct it, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So what's your grade for it, though? Um, I would probably give it a B. And, and, and it's because of those reasons that I mentioned before, that it's without you knowing the show, it is, it is kind of hard to follow, especially if, you, especially like if, if you're... A lot of musicals do a really good job where you can pick the story from the cast recording. This one, you can get the story, but you gotta really, really pay attention and, and, and nitpick with it in order for it to truly, truly, truly make sense. I'll also say though, when you do understand the story, you can listen to the cast recording and it's the show. Mm -hmm. Like there, like, yes, there are some places of, I won't say dialogue, but there are some speakings uh, during when you see an actual production of it. But like you see the sh or you hear the show when you listen to the mm -hmm. recording. So sorry, but what's no, you're fine. Yeah. So Gary, what are your final thoughts on on the last five years? Final thoughts, last five years. Uh, this is a show I love. Uh, we didn't really talk about it, but people hate it or they love it. Mm -hmm. I've never met somebody who's like meh. It's all right. Like people hate it or love it, and if you are a person who's like, "Meh, it's all right," let me know and let me convince you one way or the other. <laughs> but the people who hate it hate it because they're like, "Um, there isn't a, there's nobody to like in that show," and I just want to shake them and say, "Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly," because that's how real relationships break up. <laughs> There is rarely one person at fault. There is rarely one person who gets things wrong. There is rarely one angel and one demon. And Jason Robert Brown, you did a great job. And, and uh, thank you for creating this. Mm -hmm. Well, Gary, thank you for being on this podcast with me, talking about the last five years. Uh, um, it was a pleasure. Thank you. God, yes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my final thoughts. But until then, um, Listen to the soundtrack and tell us what you think. Gary, again, thank you so much. And we'll, we'll speak to you next time. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. My final thoughts. This is where I give you my opinion on the musical that we had just discussed. Then using a five star grading scale, I will break down the musical into five different categories. Music, story, comedy, drama, and replayability. Finally, I will give it an overall letter grade with the help of opera singer Marcia Lundra. Now, The Last Five Years is a very, very beautiful musical. 
It is a story of a relationship and a, and a marriage that just is broken down over time. It is a very relatable musical if you have ever gone through a breakup. It is a very relatable musical if you just like musicals. Um, for music, I would definitely have to give this five stars. It's Jason Robert Brown. And when you listen to it, the strings, the piano, everything just moves your soul. The story, I would definitely give it three stars. Knowing the back story, knowing the, 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 the history of this musical, when you're listening to it, you're like, ooh, am I listening to Dirty Laundry being aired out right now? But still, the story is very beautiful, as I said before, and I greatly enjoy it. Um, comedy, I would definitely give it three stars. There are moments where it has its very, very comedic moments. Um, Summer in Ohio is probably the most hilarious song out there. Um, the Song of Shmuel is another hilarious one, but also the ha it has a very beautiful, beautiful message. Um, so yeah, comedy, definitely three stars. Drama, this is, the, this is a very drama heavy show. But I think the drama isn't as amped up as most dramas are. So I'll definitely give it three stars here. Replayability, uh, I could listen to this musical for the rest of my life and just be okay with it. Um, but it, again, it is a musical that's not for everyone because it, it, has, it makes you think. You have to go, wait, okay. So this one is starting at the present and this one is starting at the the at the pass and they're gonna okay so replayability i would definitely give it four stars now the last five years has actually won several awards um it has won two drama drama um drama desk awards in 2002 for outstanding music and outstanding lyrics both won to jason robert brown the last five years opened march 3rd 2002 at the menina lane theater and it closed May 5th, 2002. You can purchase several different cast recordings on Amazon for this show, as well as stream the original, the motion picture, and the 2013 off-Broadway revival on Spotify. You can also, as of this recording, watch the full movie version starring Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan free with ads on YouTube. Rights to the last five years are handled through MTI, Music Theater International. The link to apply for the rights can be found in the description below. And that's the last five years. Overall, I would definitely give last five years a B. So, Marseille, give me that B, honey. Love it. <laughs> now, that's it for this one. Come back next week where we actually review Passing Strange by Stu and Heidi Rodewald. Until then, stay beautiful, you amazing creature. Take care. Thank you for tuning into The Whole Note. The Whole Note is recorded at Roxy Regional Theater in Clarksville, Tennessee. Intro and outro, The Bumble by Joshua Pyron and was inspired by The Flight of the Bumblebee. Grading scale notes sung by Marseille Alundra. This podcast is edited and produced by me, Kenneth L. Waters Jr. Tune in next week and discover a new musical. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, stay amazing, you beautiful creature.